I'm gonna explain to you how this part right here made our company a million dollars. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. And today I'm gonna talk about this cool part right here, all right? So we've been talking about fixturing, we've been talking about tooling, and uh, I thought about this part right here. It doesn't look like much, but the production of this part made our company a million dollars. All right, before I get started, I just wanna invite you guys at the end of this video, if you appreciate what we're doing, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. And if you wanna see us teaching on something in a future vlog, please put it down in the comment section and you'll probably see it come up in the future, all right? So check this out. Cool part, right? But it's nothing too crazy. It's got some tight tolerances and stuff, but there is an evolution of this part, right? When we first started making this part, we were making like 25, 50 pieces per run, right? And I really didn't understand the future of the production of this part. I didn't understand where this part was going. I didn't understand the assembly and what it was doing in the world, right? I'm not gonna speak to all that right now, but let's just say it exploded, all right? So, so let me just talk about our process with this part and how we went from making one part to running 20 parts with 10 coming off complete to actually having 24 parts coming off complete every time the tombstone rotated. So first, let me explain to you more than 10 years ago what our process was in actually manufacturing this part when we only had quantities of 25, 50, 75, and maybe 100, right? We actually went to soft jaws and then we created a little fixture that basically rotated on a fourth axis and finished all the intricate work around. All right, so on the first operation, we basically cut the top, cut down here, we profiled the part, brought everything in, and then we basically took the part and we flipped it down into special soft jaws. These are the soft jaws right here. So they lock in place and you can see the intricate cuts. These are very old soft jaws. This was, these jaws are from when we first started making this part. But you can see it fits down just perfectly, like down inside. And then I got another jaw that basically locks in, keeping it solid where we machine the rest of the part. One of the things that you'll see is this wall right here. And this wall is very important because there's a lot of features going around the part that are related to this wall right here. So in the next operation, in the soft jaws, we machine the part so that everything is done except for all of the side intricate work, all right? So now you have the entire part finished except all the intricate holes going around the outside, all right? So what we did was we actually created this fixture for a fourth axis. So it sat in here like this, and then it basically dropped down perfectly. And you can see surface to surface, everything is tight. And then right here, you can see a ledge right here. And that ledge catches this guy right here. As this guy drops down, you lock it, then it's got a dowel pin here that it slides against. And then two more dowel pins over here that ensures that everything is locked perfectly. All right? And then basically we have to put four screws in each of these holes and lock it down running just one part. Right? Locked in. And then the fixture locked into a fourth axis indexer basically allowed us to mill the hole, boom, boom, do these holes on the outside, flip down 180, deburr the bottom, finish these guys. See this guy right here? Flip this way, cut across, put that hole in, flip down, pop this hole in, and then go down and pop this hole in, which deburrs that hole at the same time. And then allowed us to put a saw cut across it and basically do all the deburring 
so that the part came out perfectly, right? Now this was cool, it was, it was artistic and it's how we started, but what happened was our orders went from 50 and 75 and 100 up to 500 per month and more. So what we did was we figured out that we needed to actually just rotate the part in two operations. So in looking at the different holes and how they were called out, we created a fourth axis tombstone. And we basically used Mighty Bites to lock in the raw material. Okay, we had five parts across this tombstone. And then basically we machined it, boom, boom, boom. And then we rotated it, did the side holes, rotated it, did the other side holes, and we did three sides at one time. And then we took it, so then you have five parts, and then at 180, you have five more parts. So every time the door opens, you have 10 raw blocks of material going into the tombstone, all right? During the same operation though, at 90 and 270, we actually have the part flipped and basically we cut the second op and rotate and rotate also, which allows us to actually machine all six sides of the part and the saw cut, all of it in one long operation, which enables us to keep the machine running for a long period of time. Machine stops, door opens, we take out 10 done parts, we put, we flip the other 10 back into the second op position, and we take 10 blocks that have been previously prepared and put it into the fixture. Lock everything down, close the doors, and go. All right? Now, in machining, you learn lessons, right? So, one thing there was error. That process was better than this, right? Because you had one. And now we actually have 20 pieces and 10 coming out, right? So productivity went up. But what happened was we had a machine fault and the spindle head actually dropped into our fixture, damaging it in a way that we couldn't keep the tolerances in the part. And therefore we had to make a decision. Do we make another fourth axis fixture or do we take a different approach? At that time, I looked at our downtime. I looked at what could happen in the machine. I understood that I had an EC400, a horizontal mill, and I decided that there was a better way to actually make this part. So what we did was we created these plates and we put the material onto these plates just like we did on the fourth axis, right? But now the plates are hooked to a tombstone that rotates this way on A axis, that rotates this way, right? So you're like, boom, boom, boom. The horizontal has two tombstones also. So while all the parts are being machined on one tombstone, you're actually loading the second tombstone, all right? So that's all we did. We took the same type of application as far as machining goes from our fourth axis, we put it onto a tombstone and then we loaded parts when the other parts were being machined, closed the door, hit the button and walked away from the machine. And then every time we had a rotation of the tombstone, we actually had 24 parts coming off the machine complete while the machine was running unattended nonstop. All right. And, uh, Part made us a million dollars, right? So why am I explaining all this? Because your mind and your fixturing. Because it's important to understand that machining is an art. And your ability to fixture and outthink the competition and other machinists is what makes you money, right? When you look at the Titans of CNC Academy, you'll see the art of fixturing, where we actually teach you how to fix your parts. And we do it for free because we care about this industry, we care about you, and we're bringing the heat when it comes to CNC curriculum, all right? So go on the Academy, check out our Art of Fixturing series, look at the blueprints, you can download them for free, practice on it, and you'll learn how to make these same fixture plates and go beyond based on your creativity and your mind.
Oh, that's the beautiful thing about CNC machining right there. All right, so again, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you love what we're doing, and I will see you on the next vlog. Boom.